Welcome to Power Studying. There is never enough time to do everything while in college. Too many times it seems like you've read an assigned chapter only to realize later you don't remember a single word. It's bad enough that you really don't have time to spare, but to spend it and don't retain a word makes it even harder to want to study, even when you know you should. In college, we expect you to have read the materials first and come to class ready to discuss the meaning behind what you have read and how it applies to the overall topic. We want to talk about alternatives, things the textbook didn't cover, how the information can be used. In high school, you memorize the material. The teacher does all the prep work. The teacher tells you what to study. And the teacher does a review before the test. In college, the materials are presented through reading, research, lecture, and group work. I remember studying for my high school chemistry final. The test was coming from the chapter exams. It took two nights to memorize 250 right answers. Didn't need to know the wrong ones. I finished the test in about seven minutes with a 100. What do you think I remember about chemistry today? Not a thing. Studying for knowledge means memorizing and retaining information for short-term use. Studying for application is knowing the material so well you can solve a problem using information that has been learned from various sources over a long period of time. Think of information presented within a course as building blocks. As you master or place one set of blocks, another set appears that is a bit harder or presents more information. Each layer must be in place before the next set goes up. The scaffolding is what holds everything in place. Education is about being able to take various pieces of knowledge and intertwine the bits and pieces in a way that what you learn can be easily adapted and used within a different framework. You have to know the materials at a level where you can take that mental leap to take a piece of information and use it somewhere else. An example would be what you learn in English composition. You write reports and summaries in class but how would you use that lesson as a safety inspector, inspecting a building site? You have three different levels of memory. The goal is to take a piece of information and mentally process it for retrieval later on. Your working memory is roughly 12 to 18 seconds long, just long enough to look up a phone number, dial the number, hang up the phone, and forget the phone number. Your short-term memory is around one to two hours long. Say you have to call that number again. You have to look it up, maybe write it down this time, and dial the number. By the third or fourth time in a day, you probably have most of the number committed to memory and can dial it with little thought involved. The more you think about a piece of information and work with it, the longer you will remember it or link it to other bits of information in your long-term memory. Spend 18 seconds of thought on a topic and you will save hours in the long run. Memorizing to pass a test does not work when the material is needed for future lessons. It must be mastered and placed in long-term memory. When placed in long-term memory, the information is easily built onto with new or expanded information. Neuroscience shows us on brain scans that we learn best through repetition. Repetition and thinking about the material is the key to really knowing and applying the information. The more you work with the material, the better your memory gets and the easier it is to recall the information when needed. Using a systematic approach to studying, building information layers will reduce the overall amount of time needed to study for a test. The old adage that practice makes perfect is true when it comes to remembering information. 
The goal is to study in chunks rather than trying to cram information in in one sitting. Your working memory can only hold 7 to 10 new things on average before you start forgetting some of the new materials. If you cram in a chapter in one sitting, you are usually only reading words just to finish the assignment. The material doesn't go anywhere. In fact, you might as well only read the first couple of pages and the last couple of pages of a chapter, since that is what you will remember the best. Where you read is just as important as how you read. Your brain associates lying down with sleeping. Lying on a bed or couch tells your brain it's nap time, not study time. Location, location, location. The other thing preventing you from learning is you have not trained your brain to be ready to efficiently learn. It takes 21 days to learn a new habit. If you study the same way every time, within three weeks you will have your brain trained and pumped up ready to learn on command. Start by reading the assignment before the lecture. Many might think that what the lecture it chooses to cover is selected from the, what will be the tested materials. Not true. A lecture at this level is designed to expand on the information within the reading assignment or offer alternative thoughts. Reading ahead gives you a chance to be ready for the lecture. If you think the instructor will cover only the testable materials in class, you are walking into class already well behind the learning curve. The instructor is prepared to move on while you are trying to figure out what is going on. This is one time in your life where it is best to start at the back of the chapter. Take the self-quiz. Read the chapter highlights. Review the terms and vocabulary. Then flip to the front and check out the introductory materials provided. The objectives listed at the front of the chapter are your cliff notes. Those seven to nine items are the key points to be learned in each chapter. Read the material in chunks and take a break at the end of a section or chunk when your mind wanders away. If you read ahead, then you can really listen to what is being said in class and write down key points to be expanded on later. Don't forget the did you know and self-check before moving on. If you routinely study the same way each time, you will have your brain trained and ready to focus on the materials in front of you when you start to study a new chapter or subject area. Right now, your brain is all over the place. Slow down and start forming new processes for learning materials. Question as you go along. Try to relate to the text. Does it remind you of something, someone, or a past event? This links the material to something already in your memory. Look over any key terms provided. If you know it, that is your review. What you don't know is now in your short-term memory. When you come across the definition in your text reading, it will create a stronger memory link by answering that unspoken question rooted in your mind. Now, flip through the chapter to the front, paying attention to any charts, pictures, headlines that capture your attention. This previews the materials you will be covering and gets your subconscious focused on the topic in front of you. Most want to jump in and start reading the chapter front to back and be done. Skipping the first page, which really is one of the most important parts of the chapter. That introductory page might include seven to eight objectives or the key learning points, a generalized chapter summary providing an overview or, as in this case, 
a full outline of the chapters so you can focus on what you need to study versus review when reading. Take the chunk approach when starting to read the chapter. Look for those key titles at the start of the chunk. Read just that chunk first. Force yourself to analyze it. If you are a hands-on learner, summarize the most important parts of the chunk into no more than two sentences and write it down. For audio learners, try reading the chunk out loud. It is one of the best ways to learn from reading as it gets your entire brain into the game. Hate to sit still or can't sit still and read? Get up and move around while working on the chunk of information. Starting to nod out? Get up and move. Get the blood and oxygen flowing. Sitting still and cramming in the information will only make sure you don't remember a thing later on. Remember that working memory which can only hold seven to nine new things at a time. Cramming it in will let you get done, but memory overload will make sure nothing sticks around. Learning new materials in chunks will let the brain process the materials before going on to the next chunk. If you need a break, do it at the end of a chunk instead of pushing through to the end of a chapter. You have reviewed the material twice. Once as you did the pretest and looked over the chapter, and once when you actually read the chapter. Since you have read ahead of the lecture, then you have a basis of understanding going into the class. This will let you really listen to what is being said and compare it to your growing internal body of knowledge. Just a tip. Be careful of how you phrase your questions to the instructor when there is a difference between the text reading and the lecture. When you say, you said XXX and the textbook said YYY, which one is correct, you have put the instructor on the spot. There are a couple of ways to read and retain new materials. Audio learners will always do best if they read it out loud. This really creates a perfect learning package for anyone to use. By reading out loud, you engage all language processing parts of the brain, visual and audio. As you read, question the materials. Why is this important? When would you need to know it? How can you use the materials in your work, in your life? Can you relate it to something in your past by personalizing it? When done, summarize the chunk into no more than two sentences and write it down. This engages another part of the brain by analyzing what you feel are the most important parts and kinesthetically engaging your physical muscles to write it down. Limit your summary to two sentences. Audio learners can tape the summary. When your brain wanders off task, get up and move around. This will get the oxygen flowing and increase blood circulation to the body, including your brain. You can tape the summary while moving around. This will take more time at first, but as you get used to forcing your brain to analyze content and not simply reading words to get done, you will be able to reduce the amount of time on summarizing content as it will come on an automatic process. It is human nature to want to know how many pages there are to be read. Unfortunately, this focuses your subconscious on counting pages until you can get on to other stuff you'd rather be doing instead of the content in front of you. If you really have to count pages, go ahead and then take a break to clear your mind before starting. Otherwise, your subconscious will be playing the mental equivalent of the childhood song, 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall. Only this time it will be one done and 99 pages to go.
I love looking at textbooks, particularly when the previous owner was highlighter crazy. The first couple of chapters are totally color-coded and every word is highlighted. The highlights are just about gone by the fifth chapter and the end of the book looks untouched by human hands. Highlighters are great if... They are used with care. Everything is important the first time you read a new piece of information and deserves to be colored. Analyze the content and decide what is really important before wielding that highlighter. That way, when you go back to review for a test, the really important key points or facts will stand out on the page. If you have a good understanding of the materials from reading ahead for understanding and application, then you can really listen to the new information discussed in class and not have to write down every word that is being said to review later. It is impossible to listen, process words for understanding, and at the same time process words to write lengthy notes. Just try to listen to a news report on TV or the radio and read a book at the same time. You can listen to music and read, but not hear words and read at the same time for understanding. Here is an example of a note-taking technique. Divide into thirds. Label the top right corner with date, subject, and instructor. The post-it note section is the place to put questions, website addresses, or other things to do or look up later. Review and summarize. Expand on the notes at the end of the day. People who are high visual or reflective learners tend to avoid study groups. This is unfortunate because if you really want to learn a subject very well, teach it to someone else. However, the reality is, if you say, let's get together tonight and study, what may be really being said is, let's get together tonight and socialize. Plan ahead for a study group and assign teaching sections. This way you will have time to research your assigned section and be prepared for the study group. Otherwise, be honest with yourself and go socialize. Working with others will expand your knowledge base. When working in a group, it is best to assign sections to separate members to teach each other. The best way to learn something in depth is to teach it. Write your own test questions to query yourself and others. Keep the group small, four to six at a maximum. More or less than that gets very confusing. Family members can and do pull at you when you are trying to work, study, or go to class, usually at the same time. Get children, spouses, and family members involved. If, then, are two of the most important words in a relationship. Say, if you let me study for, then will do. Just be sure to follow through with it, otherwise it will only work once. Another thing you can do is hand them the flizz, quizzes or flip cards. All they want is to help and spend time with you. Letting them help you study can be a win-win for all. Speaking of flip cards, they are great bits and pieces of knowledge. Just take it to the next step. Along with the knowledge, say why or when it is important, as well as the what. By this time, you've been exposed to the material a number of times through reading ahead, lecture, chapter reviews, group, or individual projects. Now, it is not necessary to cram for the test. Review your notes, take the self-quiz again to make sure you have mastered the material, review the chapter headings and figures. The most you should ever spend at one time studying is two hours. Yes, it will take more time at first. 
However, when you use tests as a tool to diagnose your strengths and weaknesses, you will reduce the amount of time needed to study overall by focusing on specific areas. Once you become comfortable studying for knowledge and application in a systematic way, you will become an efficient learner. The key thing to remember is, if you don't have the time to study ahead, do you have the time for an eight-hour cram session before the test? Do you have the time and money to repeat the course because you couldn't apply the materials? If this doesn't work for you or you need more assistance, you have the tutoring center, online tutoring, and the counseling office available to you. Don't wait until it is late in the semester. Start early and often using these resources. You are not asking for help. You've prepaid for these services as part of your tuition fees. Take advantage of everything offered to you and you will be very successful academically and professionally.